All right, so today we're going to go back into our study of the wrath of God. Today, I want to go into the book of Revelation and talk about the bowls of wrath. But that's not all I want to deal with. I also want to deal with all of the judgments and how the prayers of the saints are involved again. This week, I got an interesting text. Someone that has been watching our videos wrote to me and said, Where does the church fit in when you read the book of Revelation? Where do we fit in? That is a great question. And then with that text, he posted Psalm 149. And it talks about we, or the people of God, will wield a sword, wrap these enemies in chains. And I thought this is a wonderful combination of the question and then posting Psalm 149. I thought it was so good. Coming from a very interesting point of view, he's saying, how are we involved? And so then he quotes Psalm 149, which talks about the people of God being involved in judgment. Mm -hmm. So the wrath of God study, we need to realize that we're not just talking about God's anger. I'm seeing that we also have to be involved in judging, right? Try the spirits, you know, judge not by your point of view, but from God's point of view, using the word of God and judge rightly with fair weights. We've read scriptures about that in the past. God doesn't measure with unjust weights and he despises people that do as well. Now, when we say bowl of wrath, in the King James Version, the Old English, the word is vile. V-I-A-L. A bowl. Now, this was interesting. And so I, I looked up the bowl, the seal, or the seals, the trumpets, and the wrath... And I put them all in, in a search. So I'm finding all the scriptures that might have one of those words. Here and there, all the way through the book of Revelation. And it just, you know how I always talk about pattern? You have to see the flow. I did see a lot more than I've ever seen before. Now I remember going to Bible college and we had all these charts um, about the book of Revelation. I believe those charts throw us off course because as you're reading those charts, whoever wrote those charts were very carnal in their imaginations about how all of this was supposed to come to pass. In fact, I was thinking about this yesterday. When I was in Bible college, I had an annotated Bible. Now, an annotated Bible means you're reading someone else's notes. So it would have been more helpful, like the software we use today, you're reading the Bible, and then you have the definitions of the Greek and the Hebrew. That is way more helpful than what I used in Bible college. But in this annotated Bible, that's very much like... MacArthur's Bible, it's an annotated Bible. It's got his notes yeah. in the Bible, which will throw you off because that man definitely thinks carnally. Everything is literal to him. Like wind is wind. It doesn't have a meaning. Blood is blood. It doesn't have a meaning. He has trained himself and others to read the Bible literally. So he tells people, even in his Bible college, he'll tell them, when you're reading the Bible and you come across something you don't understand, just read it literally. 
He's training people to be just like him. He doesn't understand the Bible. He doesn't understand the parables, that's for sure, because I've heard him teach the parables. He doesn't understand the imagery. There has to be a hunger within you to know the, the words, the richness of the words of God. All of the words of God have meaning. Like in the prophetic books, God will say, there's a whirlwind coming from the north. That doesn't mean literally a whirlwind from the north. It's talking about the enemies of God's people coming to shake things up. And so when you're reading, we have to realize that all the Bible is written in parabolic, prophetic language. So that's what I did when I looked up the word vile, it means a bull. Now I'll use that phrase, the bulls of wrath in this teaching, because a bull is easier to understand. Later on in the book of Revelation, you've got the bulls that the angels, the seven angels have seven bulls of wrath. Now I noticed that that's not the only place where the bulls are mentioned. So this is going to help us unfold some mysteries. I'm going to go back to Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. We have read this before. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden bowls full of odors which are the prayers of the saints. What I'm showing you is the bowls are not just showing up later in the book of Revelation where the angels have these bowls of wrath. You've got bowls here that the elders and the beasts, they all have golden bowls full of the prayers of the saints. I'm going to refer back to that series we did. I watched that whole series again regarding the prayers of the saints. Why are they featured in the book of Revelation? And I'll mention again, here we are in chapter 5, and there's a book. The word is Biblios. This is where we get the word Bible from, Biblios. This is a book that's sealed with seven seals. The story within Revelation 5 is that no one can open this book but the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Now, there's a message there for me. I have found that when I did not understand the revelation of Christ and why he came to glorify his Father and reveal his character, and to clarify who God really was, before I understood that, the Bible to me was a closed book. In much the same way that MacArthur teaches, the book is closed to him. He doesn't understand. That's why he teaches, if you don't understand it, just read it literally. That concept of reading the Bible literally has infected the whole church world. Everybody does it because they think, I can't understand the spiritual meaning of the words, therefore I'm going to literalize everything I read. So when you get into Jesus' parables, you come across language like, cut off your right hand, pluck out your right eye. This is language. Now, when you literalize language, you've got a problem now, don't you? Most people will not cut off their right hand. Now, listen, the word I'm emphasizing is the word right. The word right hand and right eye, this is covenant language. To this day, 
Even left-handed people will shake with their right hand. Because the right hand is the hand of covenant. Who you are going to agree with. You know how the old guys, they'll talk about, well, back in my day, we could make a deal just with the shake of a hand. Why? Because that meant something to them. The deal you've made with someone, and you shake your hand, the right hand, you shake their hand, it's a deal. Now, that was back when your word was your word. You were going to keep your word. You shook on it. Now, the right eye and different parts of the right side of the body is also a symbol of that kind of covenant language, right? The right eye is how you see things. How you view covenant. So when you talk about cutting off your right hand and plucking out your right eye, what are you going to do now with MacArthur's instructions? Read the Bible literally if you don't understand. Now you've got a problem because you're not looking at it spiritually. Jesus is using the same language when he talks about parts of your body. If they offend you, cut them off. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Paul then took that same language about the body. Can the, can the hand say to the eye, I have no need of you? See, he's teaching. But let's say parts of the body, the body of Christ, yeah. offend you, yeah. cut it off. Yeah. You don't want to go to hell and keep that offense. That's what it's saying. It's spiritual language. And we could take many, many of the parables and realize that we can't use MacArthur's instructions in reading the Bible because Jesus would come to the Pharisees and say, you builders have rejected the stone. And if you trip over this stone, you'll be broken. And if this stone falls on you, it'll grind you to powder. How are we going to take his advice now? Read the Bible literally. You're going to have a problem. These are spiritual words. Yeah. And these spiritual words that Jesus is speaking come from the Old Testament. Like he's quoting Psalm 118 yeah, when he yeah. says, you've rejected the stone. This stone has become a rock of offense. That's out of Isaiah 8. Then when Jesus quotes and he says, this stone will grind you to powder, he is quoting that from Daniel chapter 2 where the rock cut out of a mountain struck an image and ground everything to powder on the threshing floor. Now, if you literalize all of this language, you have got a problem. Now, the reason I did this is because we're reading the book of Revelation. Who gave us the book of Revelation? Jesus. Jesus gave it to John. Yeah so that John could write it down for the saints. Yeah. This is the same Jesus that spoke in parables yeah. all the way through his ministry. And it says of Jesus that he did not teach without a parable. You can literalize it all day. Then you're going to ignore what the Bible said. He did not teach without parables. Back to Revelation 5, 8. We've got this picture. We have the four beasts and the 24 elders. They fell down before the Lamb. Every one of them had harps and golden bowls. Now, the harps, I don't personally understand yet. So I'm only going to talk about what I do understand. Okay? Is that fair? Mm -hmm. 
they all had golden bowls full of the incense, which are the prayers of the saints. The Lamb is about to open the seven seals of the book. Let's make sure we have the right language here. The Lamb is about to open the Word of God to us. When we talk about seals, can you associate that to the same kind of language where the apostles talked about Moses wore a veil? Why? To hide the glory of God. Then Paul taught, the veil is removed in Christ. Can you associate that language with the seals? The book is sealed to the flesh. The flesh can't understand this book because we have teachers like MacArthur telling us to literalize what we read. Listen, the flesh cannot understand this book. To the flesh, it is a sealed book. Just like the picture of Moses having a veil. In Christ, the veil is removed. In Christ, the seals are removed. That's the language. It's no longer a closed book. Why? Because we exalt Jesus Christ as the Lamb. So we've got the 24 elders and the beasts. They sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals. For thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. I've read this before. Now, who are the 24 elders and the four beasts? They have been redeemed to God by the blood of the Lamb out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Wait a minute, Ted. I thought the four beasts were heavenly creatures. I thought the 24 elders were heavenly creatures. I am trying to show you, you can't literalize this book because the answers are embedded in the text as you read. Who are the 24 elders and the four beasts? They are the redeemed of the Lord. They have come out of every tribe and nation. Well, we're out of every tribe and nation. So the language of the four beasts and the 24 elders is really talking about us. Because we're redeemed. Now when I say us, I'm talking about every believer there has ever been or ever will be that actually believe that Jesus Christ opens up the Bible. There was a time when I read the Bible literally because I was a word of faith preacher and I would preach all the key words like Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is my provider. My, me, I. Yeah. <laughs> is that the same as the beloved son that came to the earth and said, I have not come to do my own will. No, that's a total opposite. Total opposite. See, we were carnal. The way we read scripture was all about us. What we want on this earth is our plans, not God's plans. what we wanted on this earth. So, we taught that you sow money to get money. And then you say, that's sowing the seed. Well, have you read the words of Christ lately? 
Have you read what the seed is that you plant? You sow the seed is the word of God, not money. You have twisted scriptures because of man's default setting is selfishness. That's why selfish people, the Bible is sealed. Because they don't understand the spiritual language. This is spiritual language we're reading. And there's answers here embedded in the text that many of us skip over because we already have some literal teachings from people like John MacArthur and Hal Lindsey. Hal Lindsey completely ruined us as far as understanding the book of Revelation because he said that Jesus took John and carried him somehow, transported him into the 20th and the 21st century. Looking at our technology. So I get a text yesterday from someone, and I'm telling you how that teaching affects us. So he wrote that uh, he's uh, kind of an engineer, and he studies DNA and computer interfacing. Now, why is he on this, DNA and computer interfacing? It's because of the Hal Lindsay teaching. That we're going to have like a chip interfaced into us. Like, you know, we're going to buy groceries by swiping a chip. Like a debit card or a barcode in my head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Hal Lindsay did the body of Christ a great disservice for his carnal teachings. But here's the problem. Everyone around you that calls themselves Christians are touting the echoes of Hal Lindsey's teachings. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all thinking carnally, literally. Yeah. So they'll do things like, well, a horse in the book of Revelation can't speak forth fire. So they'll say, it's got to be some sort of weapon then that is like a horse. See, you're literalizing instead of understanding the spiritual language. And the same with the locusts that come out of the the pit, out of the smoke. The locusts are like horses with breastplates of iron and they're to harm people that are not marked with the seal of God on their forehead. And Hal Lindsey will teach, it must be some sort of helicopter. What are you doing? You're wrecking the Bible for every hungry person out there. Sure, I myself never read it. But how much of it comes bombarding at me from all of these people? Who believe this? It's all around me. So even though you say, just like me, I didn't read those books, but it's still all around me. What's going on? It is tribulation. It's the meaning of tribulation. It is the pressure of the crowd. That's what tribulation means. The pressure of the crowd is telling you, we need to think about the book of Revelation this way and only this way. Then the Bible talks about these people that come out of tribulation. Now the mistake is, because of all that carnal teaching, they can't see people coming out of tribulation. They say the great tribulation. You've added the. The meaning of the word tribulation means the pressure of the crowd. The land is trampled so hard from where the crowd is going, you can't plant a seed in it. It's trampled. 
There's too many people going that way, and they can't receive the seed. I'm telling you, God is telling you in this book, there will be a people that come out of tribulation. In other words, they're going to come out of the majority's teachings. The multitudes are going the wrong way. Their heart has become so hard that the seed cannot enter in. Exactly. It's trampled. It's completely soil that is trampled so hard there is no way that you can plant seed in it. It's that hard. It's the hearts of people that have become hard to any spiritual understanding. What I'm seeing here, all of these judgments you've got can I just go through quickly? You, the judgments come as, first of all, seals that are opened. You first of all I have all these seals being taken off the Word of God so that you can understand it. But the only way you can understand it by, is by exalting Jesus Christ as the truth. Hal Lindsay is not the truth. John MacArthur is not the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. That's what opens up the whole Bible. Yeah, he's the key to unlock. He's the one opening the seals. Then after the seals, you have the trumpets. It's interesting because it doesn't say trumpets over and over again. It says they have seven angels with seven trumpets and then it says the angel sounded. It doesn't say the angel blew his trumpet. The angel sounded. And a lot of these trumpets were judgments. Oh, by the way, the seals being opened are also judgments. Then, after all of that, you have... Somewhere in there you have the seven thunders. Now that is part of what the angel said to him. Don't write that down. That part is sealed. Don't write down what the thunders said. But guys, listen. I want you to get used to this idea. God is not trying to hide anything from us. All you have to do is study the rest of the Bible Wherever there is thunder, lightning, earthquakes. I've done this before. Thunder, lightning, earthquake. It's always at a place where God reveals his glory. Like the mountain that Moses climbed up to see God talk to him and bring back the word of God on tablets. There was thunder, lightning, and great shaking, earthquake. The word glory represents the true character of his heart. The true character of his heart. You see, because people like MacArthur are teaching us that we can't know the will of God. Yeah, yeah. It's mysterious. It just kind of, you float along and it happens to you. There's no faith involved. It's not a mystery. No. It's a mystery. That is a big problem. We have the word of God. And we have Jesus Christ to open the word of God yes. for us. Yes. That's him. The seven seals come off. And it reveals the plan of God from the word of God. Yeah. None of this in the book of Revelation is sitting here by itself. It all has references to things out of the word of God that are written before. Mm -hmm. This is all Old Testament language throughout the book of Revelation. But it's the revelation given to us by Jesus Christ through a prophet, just like he always has. When we read the book of Revelation, how are we involved? This is what I'm saying. No longer read the book of Revelation thinking, oh, it's just going to happen without our faith, without us reading, without any involvement whatsoever. No. Because I just showed you 
The 24 elders and the beast represent those that are redeemed. Are you redeemed? Then the last set of judgments are bowls. They're bowls of wrath poured out. Now here, guys, this is what I'm trying to connect. You've got these bowls of wrath, seven angels with seven bowls of wrath. Wait a minute. The 24 elders and the beasts also had bowls representing the prayers of the saints. I'm saying that there's two major times in the book of Revelation. You've got Revelation chapter 5, that's what we read, the bowls that are containing the prayers of the saints. And it's like incense, and all you have to do is add fire to that incense, and then it becomes a sweet savor to God. I'm going to say to you, what does the fire represent? Cleansing, wrath. The wrath, the burning. The burning, because I mentioned... All those things, all those things you've just said. Mm -hmm. The cleansing, the anger, the wrath. Listen, mm -hmm. Christians are being taught all over the world that we shouldn't mention people's names or challenge their doctrines. Jesus did it all the time. Jesus fought with men. Sure the apostles fought with men. Yeah. Now, because of all this flaky teaching, this carnal teachings, oh, we should never fight with men. Then you're going to lose. Yeah. Because those men are teaching us lies. If you don't expose those lies... We have to understand that the person who wrote the book of Revelation is the same Jesus that challenged those leaders. Yeah. We need to understand there's judgments coming in the seals and the trumpets and the bulls. Judgments! The wrath is going to come from two sources. First of all, the wrath is from the saints, the prayers of the saints then you're also going to see the wrath of the enemies of God. When people become wrathful in their teaching and their preaching, like they lay down a law, like MacArthur, he's very good at this. So people will ask him questions at some services and they tape them and so on. And he will actually tell them, we don't actually know why, we just believe it. And, and people will listen to that and think, there's no danger in those words. Well, we just believe it. What are you turning faith into? Blind faith. Yeah. A leap into nothing. A leap into a mystery. God's mysterious. We can't know him. He's unpredictable, and on and on, the carnal teaching says. No. He is absolutely predictable. He is going to keep his word. And I believe we need to read the book of Revelation, that these words need to come alive to us. What we no longer take the tips from Hal Lindsey and others about the end times. We need to cast away all of that teaching, and start reading again with a fresh attitude that Jesus Christ gave us this revelation for a purpose, and I want to get on board with the purpose. I don't believe it's just going to happen without faith. I believe we need to be involved in what we're reading. All of this unfolds through the whole book of Revelation. You've got the seals and the trumpets and now the vials, the bowls of wrath. Now, a lot of the language is wrath. Let's read Revelation 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Then skip down to verse 7. And one of the four beasts 
gave unto the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. So there's some language here. You've got the wrath of God and you've got plagues. Listen, where have we seen the concept before of the plagues? Way back when the children of Israel were under the dominating evil Pharaoh who put them into captivity and labor. I see we're coming out again. We're coming out of the flesh. We're coming out of flesh ruling over us. We're coming out of having these carnal leaders tell us how to think of the Bible. We're, we're done. We're done. We're finished. We're going to start afresh. When you read the bowls, they contain judgments and plagues and wrath. Now, again, I'm going to connect those bowls to the bowls that have the prayers of the saints. I don't believe that all of this is going to come about without the prayers of the saints in those bowls. As Noah built his ark, the wrath was coming, sure. but God waited. People don't understand that, but you see, 1 Peter 3.20 says, God waited in the days of Noah until the ark was finished. God waited. And those of who teach sovereignty, they don't understand waiting. Listen, I'm saying the same thing about the book of Revelation. What is God waiting for? He's waiting for his saints. He's waiting for his saints. Yeah. He's waiting for the saints to pray. Yeah. Enough is enough. Yeah. Bring the judgments. These bowls are poured out on the earth. Now the language shows up in Revelation 8 where the the bowl contains the prayers. Fire's added. See, what's the fire? The fire represents wrath. Thrown back to the earth. Then when these bowls all unfold, the bowls are poured out. They're poured out upon the sea. They're poured out upon the rivers. They're poured upon the earth and the air. All of this is spiritual language. Sure. Sure. But I'm saying, none of this is going to happen without the prayers of the saints desiring the plan of God to come to pass. Why? Because this is how God has always worked in the past. He's not going to change his tactic in the last book. He's looking for our faith. Bring it on, Lord. Bring it on. Where are the saints that get upset and say, this has gone on too long? Mm -hmm. All this carnal teaching, is there hope of Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and John MacArthur and Hal Lindsey to repent? No. And then all of the leaders that have gone on board with them, are they going to repent? I'm saying to you, that's why the disciples asked Jesus, as they went from town to town, are there a few who are saved? Because they were not seeing repentance. We've got to realize that these men will not repent. What are you waiting for? I believe the time is up. Let's look at reality. These men will not repent from their teachings. It's time for us to agree with God and pray that his will come to pass. What we read in the book of Revelation, we desire in our hearts to come to pass. I think I'll end it there.